When you throw something into your home recycling bin, that's probably the last you think of it. But have you ever wondered where it actually goes, or how we recycle it? Well, this video explains exactly what happens to your recycling once it's left the curbside. It's a surprising journey which will turn what you throw away into something that could be back on a supermarket shelf inside six weeks. That journey starts when one of our recycling vehicles calls at your home. These might appear to be ordinary refuse lorries, but they're actually split-bodied, with not one, but two separate compartments. The paper you've carefully placed in your caddy goes into one, while all the rest of your recycling, the bottles, jars, cans and cardboard boxes, goes into the other. Sometimes your recycling might be collected by two different lorries, one taking away the paper and the other taking everything else. But that only happens if a split-bodied vehicle is not available, or if access is difficult for a full-size lorry. Once it leaves the curbside, its first stop is Team Valley, and a large covered facility where the first stage of the sorting process can begin. First of all, the recycling vehicle opens up the smaller of its two compartments, and dumps all the paper they've collected. This will then be gathered up and sent by road to a paper mill, where it can be quickly reprocessed and made into new paper. The lorry then moves to a different part of the facility, where the rest of its recycling is tipped out. There's normally a worker standing by, and it's his job to pick out some of the things that people shouldn't have put in their recycling bin, such as clothing, bags of rubbish and dirty nappies. It's a pretty unpleasant job. Like the paper, this huge mound of mixed recycling is gathered up and sent by road, to Teesside, to a materials recovery facility or MRF. Here, all your mixed up recyclables, the cardboard, glass, tin, aluminium and plastic which you put in your bin, will be carefully separated before being sold on to be made into new products. When it arrives at the MRF, the recycling is loaded into a hopper and then gradually fed onto a conveyor belt. This takes it up and away into a different building where the real business of separating out the recyclable waste can begin. First, it passes along a fast-moving conveyor belt where teams of pickers remove items that shouldn't be there, such as plastic bags, pieces of metal, textiles, bags of household rubbish. It then passes into a series of mechanical screens, huge noisy machines which sort and sift the recycling. These break up any glass bottles and jars into small pieces, which then fall through the machine to be taken away for further processing. Other screens separate two-dimensional products like plastic film and polythene which can't be recycled, leaving three-dimensional products like cans and cartons which can. Everything then goes through another hand pick, where items that manage to get through the mechanical screens are then removed. That then leaves tin cans, aluminium cans and plastic. As the conveyor belt emerges from the handpick area, powerful electromagnets pass over the top of the waste stream and these lift steel cans off the conveyor belt and into a storage bunker. What's left now is mostly aluminium cans and plastic. As this drops off the end of the conveyor belt, a powerful electrical charge is applied and this makes the aluminium cans leap into the air. So while gravity takes the plastic down one chute, the aluminium flies upwards and into a different chute, with the conveyor belt then taking it on to a separate storage bunker. What remains now is mostly plastic and some other materials that can't be recycled, and the next job is to separate one from the other. Everything passes through a machine, which rapidly scans everything with thin beams of infrared light. This light can identify the likes of plastic bottles and yoghurt pots which can be recycled, and materials such as polystyrene, food or scraps of contaminated paper that can't be. Whenever the machine spots a piece of plastic, it triggers a high-powered jet of air, which flicks it off the conveyor belt and down a chute into a storage bunker. The remaining unwanted waste then drops off the end of the conveyor belt and is carried away for disposal. The whole process from loading up the conveyor belt to each separated product dropping into a storage bunker has taken only a few minutes, but we're not finished yet. The next task is to bail it up, ready for shipment. These huge bales will shortly be loaded onto lorries and delivered to other companies who will turn it back into the raw materials needed by manufacturers. As you've seen, turning the contents of your home recycling bin into useful raw materials uses a combination of high-tech equipment and simple physical labour. But it's worth it, because recycling is cheaper, it uses less energy, creates much less pollution and causes significantly less damage to the environment than any other way of creating the raw materials that manufacturers need. It's the best, cheapest and the right way to dispose of our household waste, and something everyone can do to make a real difference to the world around us.